Okay, so thank you for coming. <laughs> Give me a little bit of your time. Um, I want you to kind of go over uh, some of the questions up there and see if you think you know which one word would fit into each one of those blanks. Paul. Very good. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I don't have to introduce myself to you guys, but because you already know who I am, but for the video's sake, Candace Black, and um, that's what we're going to be talking about today, is falls. So if you see up here, it says uh, falls, or actually the blank, are the sixth leading cause of death for older adults. Each year, three million older people are treated in emergency room for falls. Um, over 800,000 patients a year are hospitalized because of a fall and 30 to 50 percent of persons over the age of 65 fall every year so when you see those numbers it kind of uh you know i mean it's a, it's a big deal especially and you know the population is actually getting older and we'll see that in just a second and so when, when you have a population of, of people who are getting older of course we all want to live a long time but when you have that then you're going to have situations like this yes, bj got it right there Okay, so the main points, <laughs> the main points are going to be statistics. I'm gonna give you a few more of those on falls, and are you at risk for a fall, and then also things you can do to prevent falls. So there it is with all of them filled in. Let me go back over that again. Okay, a few more um, tips or facts about falls. 24% of falls cause severe soft tissue damage or injuries and fractures. Women are more susceptible to fall, uh, mainly because of osteoporosis. You know, they have weaker bones sometimes. 12% um, of all deaths for those over 65 are caused by falls. And then two thirds of the elderly who have fallen will fall again. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. But uh, if you have fallen once, uh, a lot of times that you're afraid to fall again, and that can be a bad thing. That can, can lead you to fall or actually increase your chances of falling by up to 50%. So that's a pretty good uh, increase. Okay, so the factors that contribute to falls, we're gonna talk about three of them. The first one is physical factors. So age, injury, you don't even have to be you know, over 65 if you've had some sort of injury or something like that, um, and disease. Uh, relate, those changes that come because of those three things uh, in your body that increase you, your uh, chances of a fall. So some of those things, reduced vision. So make sure that you continue, I, I know everybody should know that, but that you go to your doctor at least once a year, especially if you have you know, eye problems and that you stay on top of that. Um, that's one of the big things. Vertigo, everybody knows vertigo. You kind of get that uneasy, unbalanced sensation. Um, if you have those, those are physical factors that can happen in your body that will cause you to fall. Lower body weakness, that's a big one. And uh, I'm going to show you some stuff a little bit later that you can do. I'm not talking about like going to the gym or anything like that, but some exercises that you can do that will keep your body strengthened so you have balance and strength and so you can you know, keep yourself from falling. Uh, orthostatic hypotension. And that is when uh, you go from a sitting or lying position to standing up or from a lying position to sitting and your blood pressure drops. And if you've ever had your blood pressure drop, you know that that causes you to be weak. And of course then increases your chance of a fall. So, um, when you're going from those positions, it's good to go slowly and make sure that you have, you know, are balanced and that that is not happening to you. Because if it is, you don't want to obviously get up and go somewhere and fall down the way. Um, vitamin D deficiency. And vitamin D deficiency uh, means that your muscles are weaker. If you're vitamin D deficient, your muscles are weaker. Obviously, another thing that's uh, physical that could cause you to fall. Any medication. Um, we all know that medication can cause us to be unsteady and balanced. Um, and then foot pain or poor foot wear. I was looking at a picture um, with this the other day and it showed a lady in the bathroom that she had fallen and she had on these slippers 
um, that didn't have the back in them, you know, it was just over, across, over the toe, and uh, she'd fall in the bathroom. And make sure any kind of slippers that you have, you know, that you have rubber soles, you have a back on the, uh, on the slippers, or you're not, you know, and if it's not that, don't wear anything that's not, it doesn't have a back. Those are uh, big things. Uh, behavioral factors, that's number two. So the actions that we take and we don't take. And as you get older, um, you know, sometimes I get kind of even me. You know, there's some things that I used to be able to do, and so then you, when you look at it, you think, well, maybe not, you know. Uh, but using uh, such things like a handrail, um, reaching. If you're reaching in the kitchen, make sure that you're not reaching too high. Uh, if you have stuff that, that you use every day on a daily basis, keep it down lower. Have somebody else get up there and get it for you. Um, improper entry and exit of the vehicle. Make sure that you take your time when you're turning and both feet are coming out first. You know, a lot of people, and uh, when they go to get out of the car, the first thing they do is that first foot comes out, but the other one doesn't follow it, you know, or at least not like it should. Make sure that both feet are out, that you swivel in your seat before you actually try to get out of the car. Um, climbing, stools and ladders. So, I don't think anybody's going to be doing a whole lot of climbing anywhere else besides in the kitchen, maybe. But uh, make sure that you have a stool that has a handle on it. You know, they make those stools with the handles. And if you have to get up, up somewhere to reach something that you're using one of those, put it up next to a cabinet. Um, so that way you can step up and down with a little bit of stability behind it. Um, bending, not bending too far over. Uh, if you have to, get a chair to sit in. If you have to, to get that down low to reach something. Um, and then again, the fear of falling that we talked about. Like I said, 50%. If you've fallen before, it increases your chance of falling again by 50%. That fear of falling a lot of times makes people, because they're afraid to, to do something that they think might cause them to fall, they get even more lax in doing anything. So, and the less... Uh, physically active they are, guess what? The, the weaker they get, the poorer their balance gets, um, and increases their chance of falling again. And then the third thing is environmental factors. And those are things that are in your home, especially in the community. Now community things, you can't really control all that much. Uh, stepping up on curbs at the store, or you know, uneven uh, sidewalks or cement or something like that. Those things you just have to really look out for. But at home, you can do a lot of things and a lot of simple things, you know, to help you uh, be more stable and not fall over things that are in the way. Such things, and number one, the big one is the throw rugs. Uh, if you have throw rugs in your house, you know they can turn up on the edges, you catch your toe, or um, just being slippery. If you're on the floor, they don't have a, a backing on them. You know, some some places say uh, as long as they have a sticky back or a rubber uh, back, but really, throw rugs should just be taken out. Um, I know some people don't like to hear that, but I wouldn't. Uh, pets, watch for pets uh, if you have any that are in the house. Cords across your floor, whether it's to the TV or whatever. Um, if you don't have grab bars in the bathroom, that's, a lot of this stuff is, you know, people that you might think, well, I'm not using a wheelchair right now, or I'm not using a, a walker right now, or even a cane, or anything like that. But we all want to live, like I said, to be as old as we can get, I guess. And um, so it may come that time, you know. And even before that, if you're feeling, if, if you know that you're a little unbalanced already, um, or you know that there are times when you're getting up from bed or out of a chair or something like that, and you're unbalanced, some of these things might be something that could, you know, prevent that fall from happening. Um, grab bars in the bathroom, no bath mat. If you don't have a bath mat in the tub, definitely get one. Um, high pile carpet, any kind of clutter on the floor, around the doors especially, shoes or whatever that you might pull off inside the door. Um, make sure that all that stuff gets picked up and, and put away. Um, poor lighting, you know they make the new light bulbs now that are daylight light bulbs and they put off a lot more light uh, make sure that you have light switches that are in easy reach. If you don't, there are different um, modifications that you do, different different things that you can buy 
that will allow you to turn it on with a remote, you know, those sorts of things. So if you, if you have a bedroom where, uh, you know, the light is not next to the door or any kind of room where the light's not next to the door, you might want to get rid of two one of those. Um, unit, using furniture for support. Now, if it's a steady piece of furniture, that would be one thing, but if you're using something else as support, if you're walking through your house and you need a little bit of support uh, going through, then that might be uh, a clue that, hey, maybe I need to, to do some more home modifications. Um, the step stool without handles, we talked about that, and then also wet floors, of course. If you have wet floors, make sure it gets cleaned up you know, fast and uh, give away the debt risk. Okay, so here's a couple of things. First one, obviously, fall on the throw rug. And then the second one over there on the left is uh, maybe he, that furniture was not, you know, very stable and he falls. But if you look to the right over here, um, it says the fall death rates in the United States have increased 30% <coughs> since 2007. So this goes from 2007. I know it's kind of a little bit small there, but you can see right there in 2007, there were about 47 deaths per 100,000 people. Now, that don't sound, you know, but 100,000, how many 100,000 people do we have in the United States? That's a lot, that number adds up. Uh, so 47 for every 100,000 people. And look how much it has gone up, and that's just till 2016. And it goes up from 47 to 61 from just that time period. So it's even higher than that now, I'm sure. Um, seven fall deaths every hour is what they estimate it will be by 2030. So, like I said, population's getting older. We have more people that are, are, are getting older, and we have these are the sorts of things that we want to look out for. Okay, so how do we prevent falls? We talked about falls and all the things that you know could lead to falls. How do we prevent them? First of all, talk to your doctor about your risk, your medications, your vitamin D. Um, stay active. You may be maintaining your strength and balance um, and endurance, or you may need to build some strength and balance and endurance. Uh, stretch to, to maintain or increase uh, joint range, range of motion. That's another thing that's going to, uh, to help you prevent falls. Um, practice gradual position changes, like we talked about from sitting to and lying to standing. And then modify your environment, like we just said, uh, lighting, uh, rugs, rails, and grab bars. So what I want you to do right now, if you will, is I'm going to pass out a sheet that looks like this, and it says check your risk for falling. Now this is just for you, you're not gonna give it back to me or anything like that, but it's just for your information. If you are at a, at a slight risk even, you just take one and pass it if you want to. Um, But fill that out real quick, and you'll see that each one of the yeses has a number by it. And once you get finished, you have to do So once you get finished, what I want you to do is just take uh, the number by the yes and add those up. So if you circle any yeses, those first two yeses are worth two points, and then the rest of the yeses are worth one point. So once you get it done, just add it up, and at the bottom it says total. Put your total there.
Okay, so as you're finishing that up, uh, at the bottom, if you if you read what it says at the bottom, if you scored four or higher, so if you added up your yeses and you had four or higher, then that means you are at a fall risk. You have a risk for fall. So you kind of know where you're at in there. Uh, you know, if maybe sometime in the near future you could be a fall risk, or you know, you see something that. Uh, maybe you're not checking off right now, but you check off down the road and it puts you at a certain fall risk. So you can keep that over on the right hand side if you haven't read over those. I'm not going to read them to you, but it says why it matters. I am going to go over a couple of them. Um, if you look at sometimes I feel unsteady when I'm walking, so like walking through your house. If you need support, if you find yourself holding on to things as you're going, you know, moving around in your house. That's an indication that you could be, you know, a sign of a fall risk. Um, holding on to furniture, poor balance. Uh, we can, uh, if you use your um, hands to push up from a chair, if you have to use your hands to push up from a chair, then that could mean that your legs are weak. You know, you have lower body weakness. And so if that's the case, then some of these exercises that I'm gonna show you in just a second would be something great for you to work on. So those are the ones I just kind of wanted to point out. Um, and then, like I said, you can just keep this and then, you know, if you want to go back over it in a couple of years or whatever, uh, you know, to see if they've increased or whatever, it's, it's something you can look back and um, help you out there. Okay. Got one more thing for you. These are the exercises. And I just printed off some of them. There's actually 10 uh, from this site that is put up by uh, two physical therapists, actually. have is it tells you exactly how to do each one of the exercises. Like I said, you're not lifting dumbbells or anything like that. It's just exercises that you can do that would only take a few minutes, you know, if you've done it once a day. And it can help you at least maintain the strength and balance that you have or possibly increase that strength and balance if you need to do that. Um, so especially like, like I said, if you checked off the one where you have to push up to get out of your chair, that would be something definitely that you would want to strengthen. Um, there is a website, if you look at the bottom of this page, I put a website on there, it's a video website, um, and it is the video of how to do, and it's the two physical therapists, and they explain to you exactly how to do each one of these exercises. And like I said, it's only like a 10 minutes long. They just go through how to do it. Very, very simple. Um, it goes all the way to 10. I printed off the first five for you. Six through 10 is for um, if you don't feel comfortable doing them, then you shouldn't do them by yourself. You should have somebody there to help you, you know, sort of thing. So, uh, but it, very, uh, it was a very good video that you would definitely, you know, benefit you to check it out. Um, but anyway, right here, you just have a little bit of an example. The first one, the first picture on the top left is marching in place. So you can see how simple that is. It tells you about how many repetitions to do. Um, the next one is side leg raises. That's the one right underneath. Um, and then back leg raises, the one up top on the right, and then toe to heel raises. And like I said, all those are right there and tells you exactly how to do them. And the video is very helpful. So uh, those are definitely, like I said, just quick little things that, that can help you maintain and, and build some strength. So practice and safety, just to kind of go over it one more time. You want to practice safety physically uh, by remaining active and strong. You want to practice it behaviorally by taking your time and making safe decisions. 
and then you want to practice it environmentally by removing any any kind of uh, unsafe objects or clutter or anything like that you have in your house uh, and make modifications when it's necessary and occupational therapy can help uh, with fall prevention uh, any kind of fall prevention concerns or needs so if you do get to the point where you say well I don't know what how I could modify my house you know or to help me or whatever um, the occupational therapist will actually come to your house you can request it from your doctor uh, and, and do a home uh, evaluation for you and tell you those you know areas where you can uh, decrease your fall risk there's just some people doing those things that we've been talking about talking about and the last thing and this is just yours to keep and it's a brochure what you can do to prevent falls and uh, it just really goes over a lot of the things that we just talked about um, but just a little informational thing for you <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? None at all. I was that good. <laughs> I did learn something though. I did not know that vitamin D deficiency will make your muscles and all weak. Muscles. I have to take prescription vitamin D. Yeah. The doctor never told me anything about that. Huh. Yesterday I had the doctor's office and went through all of this used to fit. Thank really? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's good. You don't think you, you need this class? Yes, oh, I'm good. giving her all the That's good. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, like I said, that video uh, of the, the exercises that I gave you, it really is out. a good video. It's something real easy that you can do. Sure um, um, so thank you all for listening for a few minutes. I appreciate it.